Welcome to Storytime with Pastor Steve. Today's story is King Solomon's Dream. It's based on 1 Kings chapter 3 and 2 Chronicles chapter 1. It's written by J.K. Egger and illustrated by Bill Hewer. It was long ago in Gibeon, in the middle of the night, King Solomon got into his bed and wrapped his covers tight. He tucked the sheets around his feet and blew out the light. King Solomon was sleepy. He quickly closed his eyes. He slept a sleep so sound and deep, and then came a surprise. A voice called very softly, a whisper very near. He heard it say to him, Solomon, and he answered, I am here. He did at first feel frightened. It did at first seem odd. King Solomon, his name once more. And who was it but God? I am going to give you something. Say what it is to be. Think what you want in your heart of hearts before you answer me. Think what you want in your heart of hearts. Could he really have heard him right? Would he truly receive whatever he asked right there in the dark of night? But God, who made the whole wide world, can make any wish come true. And he said, whatever you ask of me, I will give that thing to you. King Solomon started thinking. He thought and thought and thought. I want to ask for the very best thing and to answer the way I ought. King Solomon tried very hard to decide. He found it difficult to task. At first he thought that long life was the thing that he should ask. I'd like to live a long, long time and watch my children grow. I expect they'll grow up properly, but I'd like to really know. I'd like to see my children wed, have children of their own. Oh, I'd like to know I'd still be here when my children are all grown. And my children's children's children, that will be a merry sight. I'll visit them at bedtime and I'll kiss them all good night. I'll give them splendid presents the only, that only a king can buy. I'll build them all a palace that will almost touch the sky. And speaking now of building, I have many fine ideas, but I see that them all accomplished will take years and years and years. For I want to build a temple where we all can come and pray. The people of Jerusalem and the people far away will celebrate together on every holy day. But the plans I have for building, they'll cost a heap of gold. I'll need to have lots of money, whether I am young or old. As for buying the children's presents, I know I it won't be cheap. I'd better ask for a room full of gold piled up ten yards deep. Perhaps a dreadful famine will come when the fields turn brown and dry and the grapes fall off before they're ripe and sheep get sick and die. I could send my messengers speeding on to kingdoms far away to buy food for the people's needs. I'd have the money to pay. And my people, when they see me, will shout hooray, hooray. There goes our good King Solomon who gave us food today. But what a famine isn't is not not the thing that brings a trouble to our land. What if there comes an enemy king with weapons of war in hand? And what if he brings thousands of soldiers in armor gleaming bright, and our men must leave their homes and herds and go away to fight? Oh, I'm sure we would finally win such a war. Our soldiers are brave and they're strong. But many good men might die in the fight, and wars can go on for so long. I think I'd better make a wish that will keep us safe and free. Defeat and destruction on every foe 
who comes over land and sea. And then I'll watch over all the people, which is what a king should do. For people are dearer than the buildings or gold, as my father David knew. My father was a good, good king, and he was good, good man. I don't think there's a better king ever since the world began. He loved the Lord, he kept his word, and our people grew strong and free. And now he has gone to his heavenly home, and the king in his place is me. And now I see I've been away awfully silly to have thought about wishing for gold or to be around frightened of the enemy kings or to wish that I live till I'm old when I think how I almost wasted my wish it makes me feel prickly and cold King Solomon stayed very still in the dark and waited to hear the voice he felt very peaceful within his heart for he knew he had made his choice and Solomon said O oh Lord my God, you made me Israel's king, and now you have told me to make one wish to ask for anything. My father was a good, good king. I want to be one too. Well, what it's most important thing a king ever has to do, I think I know the answer true. The answer comes from you. You brought us out of Egypt by your mighty outstretched hand and gave us all the holy law before we reached our land. You gave us the Ten Commandments and taught us right from wrong, and you said, Keep my commandments, and I'll keep you strong. Oh, a king must try to keep the peace and build a nation's wealth, but greater than these is justice, for it's the nation's health. Now every day the people come with quarrels for me to decide, and each man claims he's telling the truth and someone else his life. And when two neighbors disagree and neither one will budge, they bring their questions to the king and let me be the judge. I feel just like a little child sitting here upon the throne when important questions of right and wrong are left to me alone. I need to, an understanding heart to know what's false and true. The wisdom to do justice is what I ask of you. For a king must carefully help his people to know what's right, wrong, and right. The wisdom I will need to do justice is what I ask tonight. And God said, Behold, I've done as you wish. For what you ask is right, a wise and understanding heart I've given you tonight, and I'll grant what you didn't ask, honor, power, and gold. And if you keep my commandments, you will live to be quite old. King Solomon woke from his wonderful dream. It had been a dream, he knew. But he woke the wisest man on earth, and God's promises all came true. Wisdom is a wonderful thing to know what is right and wrong. God has put that on our hearts to be able to understand and to judge what right and wrong, to tell the truth, to be honest. Our prayer is like Solomon's prayer, that we continue to learn how to be honest and truthful. May God bless you today.